Hello viewers, welcome to ACAM IAS Academy. Today we are going to discuss the concept of preventive detention. In what context we are going to discuss about this is, recently Supreme Court made a remark against the PD Act or Preventive Detention Act as draconian in nature. What is the meaning of the word draconian which is very harsh and severe. So why did Supreme Court say that PD Act is so much harsh and severe in nature and what is actually the difference between preventive detention and punitive detention how we have this preventive retention in India, in what situations the who have the authority to enact laws with respect to this and we'll understand what are the constitutional provisions related to PD Act. Okay, So we'll see the aspects related to this. First, we need to understand what is preventive detention. Before this, you need to understand in Indian constitution under Article 22, we have some, this is, you know, Article 22 is a fundamental right, right? But this fundamental right is protecting you against arbitrary arrest or detention. So first thing we need to remember is what is the meaning of the word arrest. Okay. So arrest means what? Arrest is a situation where you are restraining the you are restraining the liberties of individuals. Okay. So who are restraining liberties? So this is what meaning of the word arrest. So under Article 22, there is protection from arrest as well as detention. So what type of deten detention means what when you illegally or illegally. Okay, so here it is legal only. So in case of illegal detention, you can file habeas corpus. It is under Article 32 you have as a writ. Okay, but here detention is in two ways you can say. One is punitive detention. Then we have is preventive detention. These are the two aspects which are covered under Article 22 of Indian Constitution. So first we need to understand what is punitive detention, then we'll understand what is preventive detention. Okay. So first thing you need to understand the differences, right? So preventive and punitive detention where you are restraining the person from exercising his liberties which are normally given to him. Okay. So what happens in punitive detention? That means here after commission of, like you can say, after occurrence of crime, after occurrence of crime, this person, okay, so he will be sentenced or detained, you can say. Then that means his detention is based on trial and conviction, then only, okay. So then only you can say that person is under punitive detention. But in case of preventive detention, there is no occurrence of crime itself. But when you are detaining him and why you are detaining him because of the apprehension, because of the apprehension that this person, because of the apprehension that this person may commit a crime and that may result in loss to the society. That is why because of the apprehension itself, even before occurrence of crime, even before occurrence of crime, you can detain him under preventive detention. So this is what you have to understand here. The crime should happen. Based on the crime here, you are detaining after the trial. But here what happens is before the crime itself, occurrence of crime itself, on the fear that the person may commit a crime, you are restraining him in advance itself. That is what we call preventive detention. Okay. So these are the aspects you need to remember. Then what is the punitive detention? In what cases it can be applied means in all ordinary laws. Okay. So all, all ordinary laws will follow this punitive detention. But when this preventive detention will be applied only in preventive detention laws only, you can apply this particular provisions of preventive detention. And most importantly, if you see punitive detention, this concept is there in most of the democratic countries. So different countries across the world, they have this provisions of punitive detention. But on the other hand, if you see this preventive detention, it is there only in very less number of countries which are democratic. Okay, So like India, only country you can say, but most of the countries like British from where we have taken such laws, even they also have abandoned some provisions related to preventive detention. But still the question is why India is still continuing this preventive detention when no other country is following such provisions. Okay, So then we will know these things also. Then what most importantly is under article 22, we have seven clauses Okay, out of which we have 21 clause 1, 22 clause 2. These two deal with punitive detention. Okay, punitive detention. 22 clause 3 we have that is dealing with exception. Then 22 clause 4 to 7 that deals with preventive detention. So we'll look into what are the aspects. Okay, so first thing is 
you know under article 21 every person okay every citizen or even a foreigner also have the right to life and personal liberty but in some situations in case of occurrence of crime or in the apprehension that that person is going to commit a crime then you can detain them either under punitive or preventive detention that means you are taking his personal liberty which is guaranteed under article 21 but these things cannot happen arbitrarily if they happen arbitrarily then there is no purpose of law and justice right so that is why some provisions are there even in case of arrest and detention also some safeguards are provided as fundamental rights so what are those safeguards we'll understand so first thing we need to understand is article 22 clause 1 so what is this saying two provisions are there under this so where the person who is getting arrested okay he is having a right to be informed of the grounds on what grounds you're arresting him so he has a right to know the grounds on based on those grounds only he can file a application for bail right so this is the first provision second thing is he has another right to consult a legal practitioner or lawyer okay legal practitioner or lawyer because in case if he is accused falsely or whether it is true allegation or not okay so that will be decided subsequently in the trial procedure but meantime he should be represented with some legal practitioner then only he can fight justice for himself so in that situation you know in some situations of people cannot afford legal practitioners then it is a duty on the state and you know and one one of the directive principles of state policies trying to provide free legal aid also and that is one provision we have under dpsp if you know what is the article answer in the comment section and under article fundamental right 21 we have right to life no even that also includes right to legal aid that is what highlighted in, in uh, like you can say one particular case Hanura cartoon case in that particular case Supreme Court have highlighted that in article 21 as part of right to life and personal liberty in this particular case okay so even the person has the right, right to legal consult the legal practitioner and that cannot be taken back so this is the first provision related to article 22 clause 1 then you have article 22 clause 2 okay what is this provision saying then article 22 clause 2 is saying in case if the person who is arrested on punitive detention grounds he should be produced before the magistrate within 24 hours of his arrest okay that means within 24 hours he should be produced before the magistrate second thing is normally this it's whatever the time that was taken in 24 hours excluding journey time will be counted okay so beyond 24 hours unless until the magistrate orders further detention except then he cannot be main uh, he cannot be kept under custody okay only if the judicial magistrate orders orders then only he can be con like placed under judicial custody beyond 24 hours so these are the provisions given under 22 clause 2 with respect to punitive detention okay so i think now the concept of punitive detention is clear now the main focus of today's video is preventive detention so what is this pd or preventive detention as i told you that this occurrence of crime is not a mandatory thing here even in the apprehension of commission of a crime also you can detain any person so that there will not be any threat to the society on a whole okay so that is what the concept of preventive detention so when we have this origins of preventive detention directly our constitution has given or, it, or like we have taken from any other source or from where we have taken these provisions means it was taken from the British rule itself okay so British rule if you have remembered at the time we have provisions like Bengal Regulation Act is there Bengal Regulation Act we have then defense of india act we have defense of india act so if you have remembered 1915 against this only jallianwala bag muskar the persons will be protesting against the imposition of these provisions in draconian act also they're called so defense of india act so they without any trial they can be arrested all these provisions okay so at that time british used to use these provisions to illegally detain the persons under preventive detention but these same type of provisions were taken and why they have incorporated under article 22 as preventive detention means in some situations it is very much important to protect the nation security of the country so sometimes we cannot if, even if you know that some person is uh, responsible or he's trying to plan some terror attacks okay at that time we cannot wait till he plans and executes his things no so at that time even in, with, a, with some information or some doubt or some apprehension or suspicion also you can detain him so that we are trying to minimize the loss that may be happen okay so this is what the preventive detention and its idea so what type of loss who can make loss with respect to this as I told you ordinary loss 
are under punitive detention okay so but in pd what i said is pd laws are separate okay so what type of laws will be there under this and what type of laws who can enact these things we'll discuss in detail now let's start the discussion with respect to preventive detention you can see here preventive detention why it is in use what is preventive detention what is its prevalence why we need to have it and how we are having it and what are the powers of the state with respect to preventive detention and what are the concerns and way forward okay so these are going to be the points of discussion today and this forms part under gs paper 2 in indian constitution and polity section and why in news means as i told you supreme court is say, uh, it's categorically saying that this is a draconian provision that means very harsh and severe provision which has to be repealed okay so then we'll see what is this preventive detention as i told you already have given a background but now who can enact a law so that means who have the power okay who can enact a law with respect to preventive detention means this is most important thing do remember this punitive detention preventive detention are there only for criminal offenses and this can be enacted by parliament and state also that means parliament on the union list they can enact in terms of national security defense foreign affairs in all these aspects union government or parliament is empowered to enact any law with respect to preventive detention and states on the concurrent list you know concurrent list means both states and parliament can enact on the these particular things like you have maintenance of public order in case if there is a security threat to the state or in case of maintenance of essential items or public essential services when there is a threat in these situations even state government also can enact a preventive detention within its particular domain so how many states in india have pd laws means almost 25 states in india are currently having preventive detention laws within their territory so for example some acts i'll name it here like you have national security act nasa we call although these are not the terrorism and uh, tada act we have pota act we have along with like this some examples are there and also we have smuggling prevention act or even prohibition of uh, narcotics usage or these type of drugs and psychotropic drug substances act like this some particular acts are there under which this preventive detention law is in, in force then after knowing this now we'll understand what are the provisions of this so under article 22 clause 4 there is a provision that here the detain the person who is detained okay the person he cannot be detained for more than 3 months means only in exceptional situations okay normally he should not be detained for more than 3 months but when he can be detained for more than 3 months is when advisory board there will be one advisory board so when this advisory board suggests that there is a need for detaining him for long then they, he can be detained for more than 3 months how many um, months then uh, more than 3 months means in whichever the act he was booked for example if it is national security act in that act what is the maximum limit of detention that particular period will be applicable here and you have to remember who will be constituting this advisory board means they will be composed of retired judges as well as bureaucrats so these members will be there and the persons who are detained they cannot have any legal representation before the advisory board they can only represent themselves before the court of law that is one main provision and bureaucrats also will be there so this is one main provision okay so you need to understand under 24 22 clause 4 then 22 clause 7 if you see this is giving the powers with respect to preventive detention whatever the laws okay for example constitution of this advisory board or prescribing the time period maximum time period how much they can be detained and all all these provisions okay so those can be done only by parliament that is what they are under article 22 clause 7 then we have 22 clause 5 okay so what is this provision saying under 22 clause 5 like we have punitive detention so here also the person who is detained he should be informed of his grounds of arrest right to be informed of his grounds of arrest this is one main provision you have to keep in mind okay but interestingly i'll explain this provision in a while but 22 clause 6 is saying in case if these grounds of arrest if they have any uh, issue with respect to public security law and order and all those details cannot be disclosed okay that means some situations if there is a threat to the country in in case if we are releasing the details of his arrest then those details cannot be released okay they can be exempted from announcing or informing his grounds and again he have the same right to consult legal practitioner okay so these are the things which you keep 
have to keep in mind. So another important thing you have to keep in mind is this preventive detention law is only there in democratic country like India. But some countries you have no other democratic countries like US or Canada or UK. These countries have only prevented detention in war type of crimes only. Only in exceptional situations they have these things. But India it is having and you know most of the times why Supreme Court said it is a draconian in nature because as I told you it is becoming misused. Okay, So if you have seen here we have discussed what are the provisions under article 22 with respect to punitive and pun preventive detention. This is with respect to Indian constitution. Then what are the powers of the state I told you already. Okay, So they can detain in case of preventive detention and their own uh, even with respect to this there is a judicial review option also but if you see there is very narrow power here which is there under article 13 of Indian constitution which is very limited that is why most of the times this preventive detention law is getting misused okay this is what the opinion of the supreme court then what are the concerns here okay so this preventive detention is nothing but a violation of fundamental right right to personal liberty you know, based on apprehension only you are detaining him. So this is a clear violation of fundamental rights. Then second reason is you can say this is potentially misused by state governments or central governments. Okay, It is used as a political weapon also most of the times. Then if you see it is showing a remark on the Indian democratic system itself because in the event present day even the law where we have taken this from British they themselves have repealed. So it is undemocratic. This is what one major criticism or concern related to preventive detention. Now, what is the way forward? So, you normally, whatever the preventive detention is, that, that doesn't mean that state is having unfettered powers or it is having unlimited powers. Okay, So, that should be used very sparingly and very cautiously. So, this should be the way forward. So, not only in extreme situations only, they have to use it. That is the way you have to suggest. Then, what is the practice question given for prelims yesterday is, with respect to the first director of Archaeological Survey of India, it is not William Jones. He is associated with Asiatic Society of Bengal, Alexander Cunningham. This is the answer. James Princip, you know, he is the first person who have deciphered Ashokan inscripts. Okay, edicts you can say. So, answer is B. Then what is the practice question given for prelims today? With reference to the preventive retention, consider the following statements. Constitution of India provides that the time period of preventive retention cannot exceed beyond one month unless advisory board provides sufficient reason for extension. Second reason, the person should be informed the reasons of his uh, detention. Which of the following statements are correct? Among the options, choose the correct one and let me know in the comment section. Then what is the main question given? Do you think that preventive retention loss or perennial threat to the personal liberty of the citizens comment okay so in this you have to answer what is preventive retention and how it is becoming a threat to the personal liberty and what is your opinion when comment is given you have to agree to the statement or you have to disagree so these two things you have to reflect in your answer either of the thing okay so but when you are agreeing or disagreeing you should substantiate also or you have to justify how far it is true this is this is the main thing which you have to inculcate in your answer writing skills. Now, as we have reached the end of the video today, we have discussed about what is preventive retention and how what are the constitutional provisions related to it and what how India is enforcing these provisions and who have the authority to enact PD laws and what are the concerns associated with along with practice question for prelims and mains. This is all with respect to this video. I hope you found this video informative. Thanks for watching.